Hi uh, folks, uh, Eagle Spitz here with a bad hairdo again. Um, on um, Desert Island Vids, on uh, Punk for Homeless Eclectic Virtual Festival. And today um, we have uh, Stephen Brunton, aka Jesus Hooligan. Hello mate, how are you? Hello, I've got worse hair than you. <laughs> <laughs> so we're both in a shit and really. <laughs> How are you, mate? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Yeah, busy. Busy with the festival thing. The virtual festival. Good stuff. Doing a good job, mate. Good. Well done. Cheers, man. Brilliant. And uh, thoroughly enjoyed your set. Well, I didn't take down the internet this time. Which no, is no, that was good. No, it was, it was good. <laughs> so, give us a bit of background to Jesus Hooligan, because it, it morphs in many shapes, doesn't it? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, whatever, what, what, whatever way my mind wanders at that day. So, okay. um, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, my background is quite um, eclectic. I suppose is that is. I don't even know what that means. It sounds good. I sound very intelligent when I say things like that. I don't really know what it means, but well, use it and I'll put you right, and then you won't look as so intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> I basically, I basically come from a, a sort of an, an Irish background, and uh, we were always going into, you know, when I was very little, sort of younger than six, always going into little Irish places and things like that when I was growing up. And, um, it, you know, it just seemed to be from that point on, you sort of realised that if you want to sing something, you don't need uh, to have musicians and that all around you. You can just sing on your own, which uh, I suppose... That's where the basis of uh, a lot of the Jesus thing comes from, because all the all the stuff I write as Jesus Hooligan or on the Jesus Hooligan, I write it on its own, so or just with a, a simple beat. So yeah. the idea behind that is that it can be done uh, just on stage. You know, when I do, I do natural, I call it natural noise, and that's basically I just have people shouting. So you don't actually have any band members; you just have the audience doing the noises for you. And that's or you can do it with a with a like a full band. Uh, we, I mean, the gigging band is like we've got a, uh, Jason the guitarist, Dave the didgeridoo player. We've got Orup the drummer. We've got a few a few other main people that are always with it, uh, playing barrels and things like that. And uh, they're the main sort of centre of the live thing. But I always like doing it. I like writing songs so they can be done on their own as well. They don't need the accompaniment of music. And I think that comes from like when I was very young with Irish places where, you know, you'd just be sitting there in a place and all of a sudden someone will burst into song. And uh, which I thought was normal, but I found out later on it's not that normal, especially when you're sitting on the bus. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, I'm a punk part. I used to do uh, most of my uh, practicing, sitting at the back of the fucking coach going on a long journey or something. I used to get a lot of strange looks about that. <laughs> Um, you set up, you set the other day for us. It, I mean, I'm a, I'm massively into sort of all types of music and stuff, and old blues and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, you sounded very sort of the old chain gang sounding. Yeah, well, that, that really just curious. comes from. Uh, I mean, I, I've been a builder all my life, and um, I used to. I mean, I used to. I, I got a bit of throat cancer years ago, and but. Uh, you know, that sort of not stopped me from working on and off for a long, long time. And then, then my arms gave up and things like that. But bef before all that, uh, I used to, I was always hammering things and I used to just sing along to it. And I, really? I always loved the sound of chains. And um, I mean, I'm a great fan of lead belly and all stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, brilliant you know, stuff. You know, and I, I think that just, you know, you throw that in, I've got a... a you know, old, uh, Jason who plays an old broken guitar, he plays that, and then you just, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, yeah, I suppose it is, it's very chain gang like. Yeah, again, every song can be done on its own or just with a with a beat. Like a lot of Lead Belly songs were just done with a clap. Yeah, was, uh, yeah, awesome stuff. Yeah. I, mean, I think Bourgeois Blues is one of the best songs ever written. Exactly, and it's it's it just shows that, you know, a good song is a good song, and a good song can be done in any format, that's it. You know, you, uh, the way I look at it, anyone can write a, write a song, but if you can write a song that actually stands on its own, then it's it's slightly better, if you know what I mean. So it's, um, I don't know, and I've, uh, I always thrive to do that. I think I fail miserably all the time, but it's, you know, at least I try. 
Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, when I write poetry and stuff, and um, I often turn them into songs. Hmm. So it's like, I'll, I'll do it as a song, I'll do it as a poem at one gig, and then I'll be able to band at another gig, and it's totally different, but the same lyrics. That's it. And it well, while we're talking about songs, bro, what's your first choice, matey? Uh, I'll send them through to you. Now, what was it? The first one... <laughs> <laughs> I found sent three soup from songs for it. Hello, excuse me. Well, if you don't mind not being in order, I can tell you them. Oh, that's right. That no, doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter. Let's well, go I'm Killing Joke first. Killing Joke first, then go on. Killing Joke. Now, Killing Joke, one of my favourite bands ever, and still are to this day. Um, the uh, just or, the first time I seen Killing Joke uh, was in the, the early eighties at a uh, little uh, place in little place in St Albans, and. I'd never even, I'd never heard of them. Um, and uh, I, I just remember their first song, basically the place was, uh, it was only, it, was, it wasn't, it was only half full, but it was fantastic because it was just a wall of sound that just, just smacked you straight in the face. And it wasn't far, I mean, their first song, um, just, uh, yeah, you know, he had jazz on the, uh, his, uh, the keyboards and it was just the drone that he done just went through the whole song and it was it was and that you know i hate this i've stolen a lot of that with jesus hooligan with you know i've got dave the didgeridoo player and it's a continual drone that you have going through the songs and i've basically just stolen that from uh, killing joke you know that's that's um that's where i got that idea from uh yeah and billy childish said uh play Plagiarism was a high art form. Oh yeah, and the good thing is a didgeridoo player can't answer you back because he's always blowing <laughs> something. <laughs> but a bass player can, so you know. <laughs> I'll take I'll take it your didgeridoo blower's uh, mail then. Oh yeah, Dave, called Digi Dave. Is no, I meant, I, no, I meant uh, don't answer you back. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's lovely. I yeah, love him. No, um, talking about Killing Joke, uh, I did a similar experience to yours, actually. I went, oh, she's throwing things at me now, Stephen. I'm so winning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um, went to see uh, Sisters of Mercy many years ago. I fucking loved Sisters of Mercy. Uh, but I've always loved Killing Joke and all that stuff like that. And um, this band came on to support. Totally fucking blew me away. Uh, a band called Murder and Corporate. Yes, yes. So you've got um, uh, that's uh, Geordie and uh, was it Paul Ferguson? Yeah. Were they, were they in it? And, yeah, and was or, or was it Martin Atkins? Martin Atkins was definitely in them. Yeah. 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 Mer yeah fantastic stuff. Yeah. Was, uh, yeah. Some similar story there. So. Um, it must take you a lot to get around as a band. I mean, it's like you're varying um, members with big barrels. It, it, believe it or not, I mean, originally, um, originally just started off with me in a barrel uh, in a in a uh, in a shed on my own, and because um, and that's where I got the the, the actual chains came in uh, on the barrels because you've seen the setup; they have chains all over the barrels. Yeah, yeah. The reason for the chains is um, a it's it, it sounds good when you hit a barrel. It's, I mean, it's an indestructible thing. They're a fantastic thing. But you hit it, if it's got chains on it, it makes a sound. It makes a beautiful sound. But also, the chains act as a weight to stop the barrels from spinning around when you hit them. So they've got, they've got like two things. But then, of course, as I started playing, I started using the chains that were wrapped around the barrels. I used to wrap them around my hands as well and bash the barrels. And that's, you know, and I still do that to this day. So, but... Um, yeah, it got it got very big uh, a few years ago, and I, I had a lot of trouble because a lot of the barrels I used were just single barrels. And then I found I was on a building site one day, and I seen that they had these uh, uh, they were things that go into skips. They come off the they're called scaffold shoots, and what okay. they do is they all fit into each other. So uh, basically, I I could have I mean the last gig last big gig we done had we had twenty four barrels. But basically, I fitted everything into the back of a transit van because all Fantastic. most of the stuff fitted into each other. So it was, uh, yeah, it was good. But I mean, originally, we could only bring about eight barrels because I could fit about two or three in the, or sorry, about 
about four or five in the van and then like I'd ask other people to bring some along but now it's all different I've got them set up so they all slide into each other the only problem is is the legs because they're big heavy cement mixer legs and they do they're all they're like they're really heavy so you get about 24 pairs of them in the van you know about it so uh, yeah my poor van so um, obviously I mean for me um as so I mean, there's no similarities what you, to what you do, but if I was going to try and pick a group or genre to put you with somewhere, you know, I'd maybe put you with Faust and Create Rocks of thing, or with the industrial thing of uh, Einstein's and De Nuremberg. Yeah, didn't did listen to any of that kind of stuff. You see, I, the funny thing is, I don't. I never really liked Einstein. It was um, I really. They were okay. Uh, I, to, I only ever bought one of their albums many years ago, and I, I didn't like it. Uh, I was more... Um, I mean, we spoke about him, we've spoken about him before, um, Jim Thurwell. I was more into, you know, I love what he does, even though he does a lot of that sounds similar to New Band. But Which is a good point. It's a good, it's a good point to introduce your next song, then, mate, you're talking about Jim Thurwell. Oh, yeah. He's, a, he's one of my favourites. Excellent. <laughs> I'll let you do that, then, Squire. <laughs> Thank you, Governor. Well, this is uh, this is Wash by Jim Thurwell. I really love the geese. I've seen him three times, and he's been fantastic every time. Fantastic. So there's a bit of fetus for you, ladies and gentlemen. Nice swallow with it. <laughs> Go down nicely. It's water. <laughs> <laughs> it's not gin. <laughs> mm. So, where do you find? I mean, where do you find you go then best as a band in the funk scene or elsewhere? Or uh, we uh, originally it was like we were playing, doing uh, punk gigs, done a couple of gigs for yourselves, and uh, they always went down well. Um, to be honest with you, now because I mean I had a few years of very bad illness, um, yeah, where they, they had to rebuild me, rebuild both my elbows and rebuild my knees as well uh, I've had yeah had a bit of trouble with, with a bit of throat problems and things like that but I just I seem to have come out of that the last couple of months and kind um, of bionic Jesus now I am at the moment yeah I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, all, I'm held together with like nuts and bolts so, but it's good it's, it's fantastic so um, yeah and I'm looking forward to actually getting back out there and doing some doing some regular gigs but really the the places that we go down best are uh, we, we play like little mini festivals fantastic and uh you know you you'll always get a, a a crowd which is really into what we do and it's you know there's nothing every year we do a there's a festival called ballstock and wonderful people and uh we play there every year and we get a good we get a massive crowd that turns up to that but they um you know i'll have a, i'll have 20 odd barrels going out in the audience and on each barrel you'll probably have you know, five, six people. Some some barrels have eight people on them. So the actual noise that gets generated is something really special. You know, it's it's really. I'm I'm actually uh, really proud of the noise it makes. You know, and once it's going, you can't stop it. I mean, I've had we've had um, uh, people in uh, uh, at festivals try and stop us. Uh, the promoters try to stop us because of the noise we were generating. It was louder than the actual PA system. Right, because um, it's all organic sound. But if yeah. you know, if you have like a hundred and fifty people hitting barrels at the same time in unison, that noise is quite amazing. And um, I, I'll never forget just standing there. And it, it happened at a gig in Candon once. We played Candon Rocks, and uh, the the promoter was just going. He was telling me to turn it off, and mm. I just stood there with my arms in the air because we couldn't. Uh, because it was the audience that was making the sound and they were keeping the beat going because uh, and it's you know I, I, I actually you know I love it because um, yeah like if if it goes really well a gig you can't actually stop it and that's a wonderful way to be not yeah, when the, police, yeah, are, not well, when the we, police are chasing after you but you know <laughs> well I used, my old band Splatoon we used to you know sort of in this industrial crowd rock type based yeah but we used to dish out things called musical implements Oh, yeah. And there's only bits of drunk people could clank and stuff, so there'd be a rhythm section. But a couple of places, a couple of times, I totally lost it because they were louder than the band, and I'm trying to hold it together with lyrically. But obviously, <laughs> you've got a much stronger voice than I have. 
No, I just don't care. <laughs> Good. <laughs> It's always the best way of just not caring. Now, I'm quite lucky because uh, what we seem to have invented here is um, I, I usually start the beat. I will, I will just go bang, bang, bang. And for some reason, the audience follows it. And I'm lucky because on stage, we'll have a, we'll have a proper drummer. We have Orop. Um, he's a proper drummer and he's mic'd up. And it's quite good because usually the crowd will follow the beat. Or if they're not following the beat, they will follow around the beat. And it doesn't. I think there's only been about two occasions that uh, it's gone somewhere else, and uh, you know I haven't, you haven't really been able to follow it. But we've been lucky, very lucky. So, well, where can people find Jesus Hooligan stuff? Oh, you know, it's it's all over um, all iTunes, and just put in Jesus Hooligan, you'll get it all. I mean, I, I've I've done um, everything gets released on i iTunes and Spotify and all all that malarkey. Uh, I do another thing called uh, the Devil in Me, which is the same, which is I basically do that, and it has no instruments other than a barrel or a chain in it. And um, yeah, I mean that that's yeah, it's all released out on uh, on on the internet thingy. Or if you go to Jesus Hooligan on Facebook, you can actually buy the uh, CDs. Just send us send us a message on Facebook, and we'll just uh, get you a CD. Well, do that, folks, because Jesus Hooligan are fucking awesome. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, you've done a few collaborations as well, haven't you? Oh, I do. I, I look at it this way. Um, you know, you, should, you shouldn't you should restrict yourself to uh, just playing with one band. I've always, I've always you know, I'm, I'm very much in the punk ethic of do what you want, basically. And if I see a musician that I like, I will ask him to, like, come along and jump in. And, you know, we, we've done stuff with Brocker and things like that. And I mean, they're, they're, I love Brocker. They're fantastic. They're a real hard-working band, and they really, you know, they're well worth getting into and seeing. They're just a, you know, top band. The last year, they played oh, the Rebellion, and they're like really good. You know, they really deserve a lot of recognition because they're just just a fantastic band. Well, I've got my wife Rachel sitting next to me, and that will cheer her face up because uh, she always sees them as her adopted naughty boys. Oh, they are naughty. Yeah. It was the same. My wife Karen's exactly the same. She looks. <laughs> she's, Brilliant. Anytime you see them, you just you just got to cuddle them. You can't help it. Exactly. No. Exactly. <laughs> don't get too. Don't get led astray too far, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you can't cuddle them at the moment. You, no one's allowed to cuddle anymore. <laughs> so. Um, one of the things that really got me into punk was um, when I was about 14, I walked into a living room, uh, parents' living room, and the Stranglers were on TV. Uh, and I thought, fucking hell, there's something new and fresh here. Yep. And that yeah, became a punk straight away, although a lot of people reckon they weren't punks, but who gives a fuck, really? What? But um, I take it you're a bit of a Stranglers fan. Massive fan. They were, the, the first, they were my first major band that I was into. I mean... It was funny you saying that. I can remember, and I, oh, oh, I must have only been about ten or something like that. But I walked into Woolworths in Enfield Town, and they were playing something better change. Right. And yeah. I, I bought it on the spot, and um, that was it. But I mean, one of you know, I, I love, I love, especially that I mean, their first three albums I think are absolutely fantastic. And live, they were a brilliant band. But. A, very, I mean, it was about 1978. I think they'd done five minutes, and that to me is a it's a good industrial song. It's a real, it's just real power. It's a real, just powerful. You know, you could have an industrial band playing that, and it, you know, they, they wouldn't have to change it at all. It'd still be a fantastic song. And so, um, you know, Ministry could cover it, I think, and they would, you know, they would make it into a. You couldn't actually improve on it. It's just, a, it's just an amazing song. Yeah, and I agree. I mean, my favourite Stranglers song is uh, Nice and Sleazy. Yeah, yeah, the bass line is, that, is unbelievable. Yeah. Something else, isn't it? Yep. So, well, 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 so all uh, Stephen's links uh, to the uh, videos will be up in the comments, because uh, we've told you before, but again, uh, Facebook, Ed, uh, they do this, um, what do you call it? Copyright shit, don't they? Uh, but well, you can get away with putting them in the links. So, folks, check out Stephen's choice of songs. 
And thanks very much for being on. It's been a pleasure, sir. Oh, it's been it's, uh, it's an honour. It's an honour to know you lot. Anyway, it's fantastic. Thank you. And you, mate. And Karen. Oh yeah, she's Hello. she's with the dog. All right, cool. <laughs> Less trouble then. <laughs> <laughs>